Brent, today we're going to do a video update on the front sway bar of your Subaru MY15 onwards WRX. So that's the two litre Subaru delivered here in Australia. And I'm standing underneath our R&D vehicle, which is in fact the first one delivered in Australia and has had a lot of parts tested on it over a lot of period of time. And what we're going to show you today is the replacement of the front sway bar with a replacement sway bar which is fitted on the car. So what I wanted to show you first was the way the suspension fits to the car. So this is the sway bar as it would normally be associated in the car. And then this part, the link from the sway bar then connects to the lower control arm. So as the control arm goes up and down, the sway bar moves up and down. You've got to remember it pivots on this point here. So the element of leverage is actually this distance here, although the bar on most modern day cars these days on the front is a little bit complicated because it has to get around all the front suspension, the, the chassis underneath the engine and the exhaust. So on a Subaru, this part here is a rubber bush um, with an ID to match the original fitted sway bar. If you have a look up under here, what we've fitted now is the new replacement, slightly bigger diameter sway bar from Whiteline with a replacement polyurethane bush, which fits in the original factory saddle and of course comes with a uh, locking tab here which is adjustable and if you have a look at our other video on the rear sway bars I explained about what the advantages of the locking tabs. Interestingly on the front suspension sway bar original factory one from Subaru they don't have this but on the back they do because there is an element sometimes of a sway bar moving sideways over a period of time with different amounts of suspension travel. So what we can do is show you here um, the sway bar with the replacement heavy duty white line links which on this particular one are the adjustable ones so you can um, exactly balance them on left to right because sometimes that dimension varies a small amount and you want to if you're really anal you want to make it as accurate as you can you get it balanced both left and right and then it goes all the way around and misses all the suspension components and in particularly on this side here it has to tuck up and across the top of the exhaust system which is a very very tight fit um, and then around and links the other side so of course this part here um, is normally then connected to the lower bar that goes underneath here from the original factory fitted part but you can see just how tight a fit it is up in here around the electric steering rack and in behind the sump and the exhaust manifold in front of that because in behind here there's not a lot of room for fitting your new sway bar and I'll get a uh, still photo to show you how that works so one thing I want to talk about is the effect of a sway bar on the car and you've got to remember a sway bar resists the body roll of the car which is why it changes the roll motion of the car when you're going around a corner and depending on um, the position of the fulcrum that is the distance of the lever from the pivot of the sway of the axis of the sway bar to the center line of the pickup point in the suspension that leverage ratio changes the effective stiffness of the sway bar and a white line sway bar um, typically these days are fully adjustable and I'll get my camera to come in around here and you can see on this particular bar how it's got two holes and you'll remember looking at the original photo of the factory standard sway bar down here it's only got one hole because by changing the position of this hole you're changing the lever of the sway bar and in the case of the white line bar you can change it from from the stiffness of either hard or soft now typically the soft one which is the furthest away is very very close to the original factory sway bar stiffness but as you go to the next hole it actually makes it stiffer again so don't always assume the effective um, stiffness of the sway bar is directly related to the size of the bar and also don't fall in the trap of thinking you need the same diameter bar on the front as what you do on the back because it's all balanced from the original manufacturer depending on the level of grip, the springs, the shocks, the overall balance of the car and of course how you want it to handle. So typically if you go to a really big bar on the back it'll make the car really oversteery on the back and if you go really soft on the back it'll then transfer and make it completely different from the front. So these things are the things you need to consider but also I really want to touch on the fact that it's important in your choice of sway bar to make sure it fits as original as possible so you don't have any problems with any of your other parts fitting and you can see with the larger diameter MRT exhaust um, with our XB power kit how the clearance up around here is a very very tight fit when you fit a 3 inch exhaust in here compared to the original factory smaller diameter exhaust and these are the things that Whiteline take into account when they're making these parts because we work very closely with them so depending on where you are in the world these are the things that will affect your choice of decision now the other thing I want to touch on as well is 
depending on your choice of tyre grip. So these ones you'll see they're, they're not a semi-slick, they're more of a road going tyre. Semi-slick has less grooves in it and a full slick has no grooves at all. So of course you'd have a much grippier tyre if you're racing the car at the track with a full slick. And also if you had really stiff springs and shocks, that will change your choice of sway bar stiffness or depending on whether you want to change the sway bar at all. But when you're talking about a car that um, has got original springs and shocks, which this car does at the moment, sway bar provides a really good um, cost effective way of making the car handle better without having to have the hassle of changing springs and shocks and some of those other associated components. So there you have it, that's one of the really cheap and cheerful ways to improve the handling of your Subaru WRX, no matter where you are in the world. I hope this information has helped you. Have a look at the still photos at the bottom of this um, video channel and you'll see some more information about this particular car and also these particular parts that we've just been talking about. And I hope no matter where you are, this has helped you learn more about your car. And for now, follow us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. My name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.